Now, since the beginning of this year, South Africa's listed property index has grown by over 26%, outperforming bonds, equities and cash thus far for the year. And just having entered the early stages of an interest rate cutting cycle, the outlook for the industry is positive. Quentin Ross, CEO of Spear Rita, joins us with his take on where the sector is headed. Thank you so much for your time, Quentin, where the sector is headed, but also really your strategy behind your growth. And really just to take it back in terms terms of you know strategy um spear prides itself in specializing in one region in south africa but really where you'll find the diversification is in the different asset classes that you are invested in just talk to me about how that portfolio has evolved over time and also just the drivers behind what you have in the bag right now great well good afternoon and thanks for having me it's a privilege to be here I think um, you know our primary strategy since inception has mm -hmm. to be uh, was to be close to our assets, and okay. the, by design, the way to be close to our assets was to focus on a specific region. Yeah. And we found ourselves um, operating within the real estate sector in the Western Cape. Yeah. Uh, the Western Cape had already back then started to decouple itself from uh, what we would call the real estate fundamentals of the rest of the country. Um, and we saw an opportunity to acquire a portfolio of assets uh, from a li another listed fund and to really just build out a regionally focused fund that got its diversification across mm -hmm. investing into high quality industrial, commercial and convenience retail assets. And at the time, also into hospitality. Okay. Obviously, as, as our journey has evolved over the years, you know, we've also had some lived and learned experiences of what fits the fixed income side of the portfolio mm -hmm. and what doesn't. And coming out of COVID, you know, we've, we traded out of hospitality and just uh, focused all our attention and energy on the industrial convenience retail and commercial plus mixed use yes. um, asset classes within the Western Cape. Ah, all right. Well, and a part of that also has been growing your portfolio and uh, your latest uh, uh, acquisition move was the assets that you bought from Emir. I do understand that your shareholders did approve that uh, as well. Talk to me about how this fits into the portfolio, but also the benefits that uh, Spear will be getting from these assets and really the plans that you have for them uh, in the short to medium term. Yeah, so, so our focus um, as an overarching focus is we'd like to grow the portfolio to becoming a, a meaningful mid-cap player within the listed property sector. Um, and as a result, we, we, we also recognized um, early on that a lot of the other SA REITs were looking to diversify outside of the borders of South Africa, yes. uh, where our focus purely is within the Western Cape. Uh, w when we engaged with the Emira um, team on the transaction, mm -hmm. The transaction made sense for us on many fronts. The okay. type of assets that Emira owned within the Western Cape uh, were very similar to the type of assets that Spear owned and equally also in the same locations, okay. which meant that we understood the fundamentals of each uh, node that they owned assets and also we could quickly respond uh, to where we thought the rental demand would come from and which assets we thought were um, were opportunistic acquisitions for us within that portfolio and which assets were uh, kind of you have to just buy those assets as part of the portfolio and then mm. kind of asset manage them uh, into into the future but that being said the portfolio itself we identified as a high quality portfolio mm. and with that engagement we saw that you know spear is a fully internally managed fund uh, we do all our property management our rent collection our development management and financial management and asset management in-house yeah uh, where the Emira portfolio at the time was an externally managed from a property management perspective so we saw some economies of scale opportunities that we could overlay over yeah. that uh, portfolio from a day-to-day uh, -day asset management and property management um, uh, perspective mm. uh, but also we saw uh, because our strategy had when we moved out of hospitality yeah. We said that our kind of two pillars of focus. Now, we don't say that there's no place for offices because offices, as you've seen, have made quite a strong comeback in the Western mm -hmm. Cape. We decided from a pillar perspective, primary and secondary asset uh, capital allocation will go to industrial and to retail. Okay. With the Emira acquisition, we acquired a 93,500 square meter uh, diversified portfolio. But the assets themselves 
were underpinned by high quality industrial logistics, mini and mid-size unit industrial assets, mm -hmm. but also the, the retail assets that we acquired within that portfolio were medical retail. So they're quite sticky because there's a day hospital, there's a medical facility uh, and a clicks um, that really makes those retail assets quite sticky and quite difficult for those tenants to, to vacate because there's certain licenses yeah. attributed to, to, those to those locations for the operator. So we saw that as a quite a, a nice fit into the spear portfolio within the retail segment. And that is an area where we'd like to you know, focus energy in, on, on growth. But demand for retail in the Western Cape has been exceptional. Mm. Um, so there's been a lot of um, money chasing the same assets. Yeah. And we're value investors. Uh, we believe that you can create, recreate value by acquiring assets. Um, so we want to buy well. Um, so we'll bide our time uh, on the retail side, but we've done really well in growing our industrial portfolio, which forms, part, forms about 62% of our portfolio mm. gross letable area today. You talk about really focusing your energies on the two pillars, uh, industrial and uh, retail, um, and that's also where your capital allocation focus is going. But I'm wondering because, I mean, just looking at office, even last week when, you, when you sp we spoke, you spoke about, you know, uh, the drivers behind the increasing activity in office. Uh, you have a same immigration and also you have the growth in the fintech sector. Now, I'm wondering with this increase in demand, do you see um, a potential increase in terms of, because obviously office supply is, is constrained. Do you expect to see some kind of increase there in supply, maybe uh, office-based development, and would that be something that Spear would be looking at or not? So certainly we've seen um, both in Century City, we've seen in the, in the V&A waterfront, as well as the southern suburbs, Newlands, Claremont yeah. area, uh, developers actually starting to develop offices again. Um, the vacancy contraction within the P grade, triple A grade and A grade office space has been so marked that um, developers are willing to take that development risk. Mm. From a SPEAR perspective, we've always operated with a very conservative balance sheet. Okay. Um, and also we've, we've been very successful in growing our portfolio through acquisition of income producing assets. Development has a time and a place within our portfolio. Uh, but at this point in time, development of new offices um, will not meet our investment criteria from a weighted average cost of capital perspective. Mm. So it, it'll cost us way more than what the return will give us in terms of rental income over a certain period of time. Therefore, it will be more prudent for us to yeah. allocate our capital into assets that are generating ahead of our cost of capital. But that, is a, that doesn't mean that other developers or other property investors that may not be REITs because REITs are a income fund um, in its very nature yes. um, and development does um, kind of detract from income for a period of time. Mm -hmm. However, private equity funds or developers that do not have the obligation of, of having a distribution payment every six months, yeah. they do take a longer term view and um, develop at, at probably lower than their cost of, of capital at a point in time and allow those escalations um, to kind of mature. Yeah. And we've seen that. We've seen that with the development of the new Riverlands precinct uh, by Zenprop. Mm -hmm. We've seen it in Century City with Rabi Property Group equally developing the new CIPLA uh, regional head office where they can do it um, and then take a longer term view where we really have to take a view of what will impact our distributions mm. and overall what it'll do to the income of the portfolio. Okay. Um, with industrial, um, I think for a while it's been seen as the more defensive property class. Would you say that things are still the same, particularly in this economic cycle? What are you seeing as the drivers of demand there? Yeah, I think the, um, there's a few things. I think we're now 215 plus days uh, free of load shedding, yeah. um, which means that um, your industrial users, uh, whether it's small businesses, mm -hmm. uh, manufacturers, uh, uh, guys that are in the distribution space uh, or in the fulfillment space, they can operate uninhibited. Mm -hmm. um, and, and what that does is you know, a, a great outcome of the GNU, uh, resulting in the GNU, yeah. uh, no load shedding, it allows companies to really relook uh, their expansion plans and their mm. operational um, kind of strategies for the foreseeable future. And we are seeing that come through in the industrial subsector. So it is very defensive uh, for us as landlords. 
Um, also, you know, the Lord only made so much land in the Cape. You've got an ocean on the one side and a mountain on the other. Mm. So the availability of uh, developed and zoned land is becoming scarcer and scarcer. Mm. So what you find, and together with construction costs being yeah. quite prohibitive, you're finding that landlords like Spear and many other of our peers that have existing high quality industrial assets are actually the net benefactor of quality rental growth coming through, okay. uh, which actually then underpins good valuation growth of that um, asset class. In addition to the industrial sector, what makes it very attractive for landlords is that your cost of, of replacing a tenant when a tenant vacates is very low compared to the office sector mm -hmm. and compared to the retail sector in, in, in many regards. And, and that is what also makes it very attractive uh, in terms of a subsector for us as a landlord because we own over 250,000 square meters yeah. of industrial GLA, but it's made up of logistics, urban logistics, warehousing, bulk storage, manufacturing, and mini and mid-size industrial units. Okay. So as a regional investor, we've really got exposure to the, the full spread of industrial uh, demand within the, West, within the Cape Metro and mm -hmm. within the Western Cape if you include the future development in George. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time. We do have to end the conversation there. Uh, quite a, a very interesting uh, conversation as you walk us through the fundamentals behind Spear's strategy direction. Uh, that was uh, Quinton Rossi, CEO of Spear REIT.